Hafa de Guam, I'm Joanna Delphin from the Joint Region Marianas Public Affairs Office, and today we're at Asta Memorial Beach Park. I'm surrounded by many coconut trees which once stood beautifully here on this beach. Today, a lot of them have been devastated by the invasive species, the coconut rhinoceros beetle. Join me today as we learn more about what this species is and how we can prevent it from spreading around our island. So today we're joined by Mr. Roland Kitigua, the Operations Chief for the Coconut Rhinoceros Beetle Project from the University of Guam. Roland, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about the rhinoceros beetle. Well, thank you for having us. So uh, can you talk to us a little bit about what this little guy is and, and uh, how long he's been here on Guam for? In September of 2007, a, um, an employee of one of the um, chapels in Tumon brought in a beetle to the Department of Agriculture and uh, it was then brought up to the University of Guam and confirmed as the coconut rhinoceros beetle. Uh, shortly after that, the University of Guam did a deliminating survey and found out that uh, there was a breeding site in Tumon and it was confined only to the Tumon area with uh, the damage that we saw and, and, the, and the one breeding site that we found. And so a eradication um, project was um, started then. So the problem with the coconut rhinoceros beetle and the big concern is the fact that the coconut rhinoceros beetle, actually the adult beetle, flies in, into and uh, feeds onto the crown of the coconuts and in doing so over time and if a number of them hit a uh, uh, feed on them or if they feed at the growing point will actually kill the coconut tree. What will then happen is as that coconut tree starts to die the coconut rhinoceros beetle will also lay eggs in dead decomposing organic matter. And that was also kind of one of the problems that we have here and that made our e ecosystem different was because unlike most islands, uh, we went through so many typhoons in years past and we have so much green waste that's just laying around uh, in the jungles and, and in people's backyards. And those are the favorite breeding sites for this particular beetle. And that's what's making it very difficult for us to manage this or, or, or control this beetle. Now, you, you want to talk to us a little bit about their growth cycle? A coconut rhinoceros beetle has a life, has a, a developmental stage anywhere from 95 to maybe 105 days. The adult female will, um, when it emerges, mm -hmm. will go and feed in a coconut tree. After it feeds for about one to three days, it'll then go to a pile of organic matter or a dead standing coconut tree, which is their favorite um, uh, breeding site. And they will um, find a, um, a, a male, they will breed and, and lay eggs. And over her lifetime, a female can lay maybe 100 eggs. And they do this over time. Now, what happens is once the, the eggs will then hatch and become what are called instars, and there are three instars and each of the the instars are uh, larger than the the previous one and the last one the third instar is about the size of my thumb and we'll show you one a little a little later the after the um the thing about the, the instars is those grubs or or, or worms as, as you might want to call them are actually not pests they are actually very good decomposers and they are very good at converting green waste into compost we have a problem with green waste, so is there any way that we can use these grubs to then break it down? So after the grub then consumes all the, the green waste that it can, it then changes into a pupa. The pupa is similar to the um, uh, cocoon stage of a butterfly. And then after that stage, it then emerges into an adult beetle again. And that's when they become dangerous. And that's when they become dangerous. Only the adult beetle is a pest. If you see coconut rhinoceros beetle damage on your trees, and we'll show you that later, what you can do, first thing you should do is scout around your area and clean up the green waste. That's, it. if you see one or two hit, uh, hits, I would not be too worried about that, but just know that they're in the area. Now, if you start to see heavy damage, then that's telling you that there's a breeding site nearby. And what you probably need to do is go out anywhere from two to 500 feet out and just scout and see if there's any breeding sites. Look for piles of green waste. And in those piles of green waste, you might want to check and see if there's any breeding. Um, we also recommend that you sanitize and get rid of those things. And the way to do it is, one, 
you can take it and you can apply pesticides to you can um, uh, burn it um, but I don't recommend those for the average homeowner my recommendation would be to maybe put it like in a 55 gallon barrel and cover it with a chicken wire mesh and what we did was we took organic matter and we put it into 55 gallon barrels and then what this is is basically a breeding site but as you see in here there's good compost in there and that compost was we, we just cut coconut trees and we cut small pieces and we put them in and over time they get eaten by the coconut rhinoceros beetle in, you in can its, see that? its pupa stage no no in, in its, its larvae in, in, in the in larvae it. okay and over time they break it down into soil so the, right now this is a big rhino beetle compost pit but all the chemicals that are coming off that are what's attracting the rhino beetles you don't see rhino beetles in here because they're always hiding they come out at night so one of the tricks is you can take a pan, put it in there, and now any beetles trying to get in will get trapped. You can go over there, see it on a daily basis, and if you catch anything, you can monitor, and that's how you know rhino beetles are in your area. And all you need to do then is the next day, take the rhino beetles that you catch, dump it in, and what's gonna happen? Those rhino beetles are going to breed, they're going to be breaking down the organic matter. Over time, they're gonna be releasing those chemicals, and all the chemicals are gonna be coming up and once again making your trap more effective okay so rollin now can you tell us how we can identify if a coconut tree has been attacked by the rhinoceros beetle the first thing you want to look for when inspecting for coconut rhinoceros beetle damage are the telltale v-shaped cuts and if you look up here on this tree this one here just happens to have multiple v-shaped cuts once we see that we start to go down to the crown of the coconut and at the base of the fronds is where we want to look for boreholes. And right here, if we come to this side, you're going to see this right here. This is a borehole. There and this here. These are the telltale signs of rhino beetle. It burrows up here in the crown. It's basically feeding on the sweet juice, kind of like the, the uh, manha juice. Yeah. Okay, you like tuba? Yeah. Sweet tuba? Uh -huh. And that's up here in the crown. So this is where the rhino beetles are feeding. It's in this area. This is what we call chew. And so when rhino beetles go in, as they're, ex as they're going in or exiting, they start to, to send some of the shredded material out. And that's basically how you know that there's rhino beetle damage. Coconut tree is the favorite feeding species of the coconut rhinoceros beetle, but it'll also go to ornamental palms. The royal palms, the foxtail, the champagne, all of them fan palms all get hit. So do they actually use their rhino beetle, their horn? Is that what kind of- You know of what? We're we have not seen it and it's 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 uh, my suspicion is that they take the horn and they hook themselves so that it gives them leverage to dig in <clears throat> this here is an example Can of rotting coconut and a coconut trunk this was an entire coconut log and this is all that's left because the coconut rhinoceros beetle and here are all the grubs to so here are the third instars Look how big these guys are. Oh, wow. Yeah. Juicy. So these guys are what eat this and turn this into this beautiful compost. And what we actually have done is we've taken uh, compost uh, and, and put them into piles. And you'll see stuff like this in the pile. So if you screen it out, um, we've screened it out. We've even solarized it. And look at this beautiful compost that comes out right here. Look at that. And they're all, uh, that, that's all a... Um, this is a byproduct. Because, because of the rhino beetle. Yes, because this grub eats and turns this into this co beautiful compost. So these are very good decomposers. And you gotta watch out because these guys will bite. So those are more of the dangerous oh, yeah. ones for humans yeah. than this one is. Oh, that one won't do anything to you. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at him. He just bit him. This guy will eat because they defend each other. They start out as small as this mm -hmm. and they turn into this big vicious decomposers. Once again, only the adult beetle is a pest. The other stages of its life cycle are actually beneficial. Well, Roland, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this segment of Island Images to talk to us about the rhinoceros beetle. Um, it's been, been very informational and I hope that we all learn from it and learn how to um, mitigate this problem on our island and, and uh, keep invasive species from coming back in. Well, thank you very much. And all I ask is that everyone do your little part to preserve our natural resources. That's it for this segment of Island Images. Join us next time, Guam. 
Adiós. Adiós.